So today is our first lesson, which will be lesson one, Python basics. So before we start, we should probably talk about what programming is. So programming is a process in which people design and create instructions for computers, often called computer programs or code. And a programming language is what uh, is written instructions given to a computer to complete a specific task. So there's a lot of programming languages that exist. Uh, could we take maybe a minute and chat and name a few programming languages and we can have Ethan and Eddie um, shout them out. So a lot of people are saying Python. Yeah, See? Python. <laughs> That's crazy. It's Python. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Java, HTML. Okay. Um, HTML is a little special one. It's not technically a programming language because it doesn't have programming syntax in terms of con control structures and functions, but we'll get into that later. It's more of a set of rules for designing a web page. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, as somebody mentioned HTML, there's also a CSS, which goes along CSS. with it. There's PHP, Bash, Scratch. PHP. Wow, okay. Scratch. <laughs> Scratch. <laughs> Damn, this person language, is man. huge brain. Scratch, okay. So here are some programming languages. We have PHP, uh, which I think someone mentioned. Python, of course. This one's Ruby. We have C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript. So these are all programming languages. So as many of you guessed, and I guess you can tell by you know, our lessons, we will be using Python as a programming language. It is high level and general purpose, which basically means it's very easy for beginners to learn. So over here, we have some examples. Again, we'll eventually figure out what this means. So before we start, we will be using an online integrated development environment or an IDE called REPL.it. So that's just literally the URL. So you'll have to make an account to make or uh, to use REPL. So we could take a few minutes to make an account and I'll show you via screen share just in a second. And for context, an IDE is a software that helps programmers write and compile code. So if you already have your IDE uh, for Python or you already know what it is, you can use your own. You don't have to use REPL. So for this, I'm actually just gonna show you this if I go like this. So again, um, I'm already on the website, but you can just literally write REPL.it. So you can either sign up or log in. If you already have an account, you can log in or you can sign up. You can sign up with Google, GitHub, Facebook. I mean, if you want to sign up with Facebook, that's okay. <laughs> but in this case, I'm just going to log in since I already have an account and I'll be logging in with Google. And oh, um, if I'm going too fast, can you tell me then? Um, and then you can create a new REPL here in the corner with a plus sign. Type in Python. We're not using Python 2.7, Python with turtle, Pygame. No, it's just Python. And then you can name it, I don't know, Python Pet CS Lesson 1. And you can create the REPL. So how about we take a few minutes um, and when you're done, maybe raise your hand or say yes. And once we have a majority of people saying yes, we can continue. Sorry, there's somebody saying go slower. Is there anything specific that you'd like? Yeah, would you like me to or... walk through the process of signing up again? Uh, did they say what they wanted me to do? Anything specific? If there's anything specific that you'd like repeated, just say so. What version of Python is the general one? Oh yeah, 3.8.2, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm actually not sure what the one Ripple uses, but it's Python 3. Point something, yeah. 3.x. <laughs> which is different from 2.7. So that is why Anybody we wants to know how you got there. Pardon? Uh, could you show how you got there? Just okay, so run it through again. Right, let me sign out. Here, I'll just make a new tab. 
repl.it. So this is the URL. And we want to either sign up or log in. So I'll sign up. And then you just sign up either manually or you can do it through Google, GitHub, or Facebook. And in this case, I'm just going to log in. And then you can create sign up here. I favored it, but you'll probably have to search up Python. And you want the one that just says Python, not any of these. And then you can name your REPL and anything you want and then create it. Again, once you're done, please react with yes or just raise your hand. Oh, it does say the version of Python up here. It seems to be 3.8.2. Just waiting for a few more people. All right. Um, is there a difference between using the client and the app? For this? For REPL, REPL is on, online. I don't know what you mean by client uh, or app. That was a question. I mean, yeah, you can use any IDE you want. Yeah. We're just... It's just REPL is um, online, so it's more accessible. Cool. We're good, or... Just, just a few more people. If you're struggling with anything, you can ask in the chat. Otherwise, react with yes when you're done. Um, so could you run over how you got to the Python part again? Okay. Uh, do you need me to show up the sign up again or is that okay? Should be fine. Yeah. All right. So again, once you log in, you'll be greeted to this plus sign. You want to click it and you want to search up Python and you want this one, just Python, not Python 2.7, not Python with turtle. And then you just name your REPL. I mean, it gives you automatic name, you can keep that, and then you create the REPL. I'll just create it again for this, the sake of this. All right, um, it seems like most people are done. So All we right. should move on now. All right, I go back to the slide. I'm just gonna show you like generally how REPL works. So here is where you write your code and we'll be you know, showing you how to write the code later on. Here, this run button will execute your code. So whatever you write here will be executed. And here is the console and your output, your code's output will appear here. So again, this is where you write your code. You can write whatever. This is where you execute your code. 
and this is where your output of your code will be. All right, you can just ignore this like sidebar completely. So let's go back. So the first concept we'll be talking about for REPL or for Python is printing. So in Python, we can use print, open bracket, close bracket to output a message. So between the brackets, we can put a string and a string is a set of words like a sentence, um, given that there are quotation marks surrounding this string. So try copying this code and clicking run and tell us what happens in the chat. So while that's happening, actually, actually, you guys need to see the slideshow, don't you? Yeah. It does say hello world, yes. Indeed. So we can move on. Um, is everyone good or should I show you in? Uh, no, there are no semicolons in Python. You could use semicolons, but yeah, no, don't use semicolons. Right. And if we run it, it should say hello world. So you should see hello world appear in the right in the console. So you can try changing this message to any other phrase as long as you have quotation marks surrounding it. So you could say, hello, Ethan, or I like apples or whatever. All right, for the second concept, we're gonna learn about variables. So for a computer to complete a task, it usually needs to store information. So the most basic way to store this information is called variables. So it's basically a word that contains something else. In this case, it contains the string hello world. So let's store our previous printed message in a variable. So we would write message equals hello world, and then we can just print the message. So are we, yeah, why don't you spend a minute recreating this code actually? And maybe even I could show it through this. This, just copy paste it. And Hello world. So for computer to complete, uh, okay, sorry, that's the wrong slide. So variables can store different types of information. So the three main are string, integer, and Boolean. So string, as we previously established, is um, a set of words which must be surrounded by quotes. Integer can store any number, so any whole number, and Boolean can store true or false, and we'll get into the future of what this means. And in addition, there's also very uh, many other types of variables, um, such as float, double, but you don't have to worry about them right now. Yeah, um, the names of variables can be whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want to type, but there's a few rules. So you only want to use alphanumeric values, which means A to Z and 1 to 9, and or an underscore. And you don't want to have the first character of a variable to be a number. You don't want to have white spaces in a variable name. Variables are case sensitive and should provide descriptive names to describe what the in what information they hold. And some variable names are illegal in Python, such as import and false. These are keywords which are resolved for other uses. Uh, so, so for the list of keywords. Yeah, we've linked keywords here. Um, for the most part, I would not worry about um, keywords because there are so few of them and they all make terrible variable names. Like you should not use them as variable names in the first place. So these rules might be a little confusing. So to test your knowledge, we're gonna, we have a list of variables and you're gonna rate them on how good they are. Or you're gonna say yes or no for if they are good or bad. So for the first variable, one name equals John Doe, um, say yes if it's a good variable name and say no if it isn't. And Ethan will tell me the majority. 
Um, we're using the Zoom reactions, preferably. Um, I can't see it, but... Yeah, not the chat, the reactions. Mm -hmm. So maybe give in another... It looks like most people are saying no. You are correct. Well, you're all correct because as previously stated, a variable cannot start with a number. And two, there is this white space between the variable names or variable name. So this is an invalid variable name. It's just bad. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> okay, the second variable, number equals 47. Yes, for if it's good and no for if it's bad. Looks like most people are saying yes. And yes, it is a good variable name. It has valid alphanumeric characters, no white spaces, and it's descriptive. It describes what it stores, a number. Let's move on to the next one. Mark percentage equals 69. Is it good or bad? We're getting a majority for no. You guys are correct because again, mark percent, the percentage is not an alphanumerical character, so it does not work. Um, for the next one, apple equals one, two, three, four, five. Is it good or bad? This one seems to be pretty split 50 50 between good and bad. Okay, so the answer is it's bad. Now, if we look at the variable itself, technically it is a valid variable name, like Apple works, um, there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem is, is that the question is asking what variable names are good. So Apple is not really a good variable name because it's not descriptive. If I were to say num apples or number of apples, this would be a good variable name because it's describing what the information is being hold or held. Um, does that make sense for everyone? That we want to have descriptive variable names. It's a very good practice. Okay. Um, is the general consistency okay with it, Ethan? Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to the next one. Import equals importing. Good or bad? This one's mostly no. Hey, you guys have good memories. Again, as we previously stated, import is a keyword in Python. So this variable name would not work. And our final variable name is username equals uh, that. <laughs> good or bad? <laughs> I'm already that out. XX, Epic Gamer XX. Yeah, most people are saying good. You're correct, it has valid characters or alphanumeric characters and it's descriptive, it's storing a username. So if anyone has any questions about variables, put them in chat right now and we'll answer them before we move on to the next concept. We're on like one minute for anyone to have questions. I'm actually wondering, I think I can open up chats. Do you guys see that on my screen? The chat appearing? No. no. Oh, I can't open chat. Okay. So somebody else, so both sides can't, have, can't have, symbols. have symbols. Oh, my bad. So both sides can't have symbols? No. If you mean symbols as a non alphanumeric characters, no. How about underscore? Underscore works. Okay, so just underscore? Yeah, underscore and alphanumerical characters. Okay, so letters and numbers, right? Yep, letters, numbers, and underscore are all valid. All right, so we'll move on to the next concept as it seems that there's not too many questions. All right, so user input. So the way to interact with code is that Python allows you to get user input. In other words, you can get people using your program to enter data into it. So, so this can be things like inputting a username, answering a question, or inputting values for a program that calculates something. 
So input is a function you want to get to get the user input. It also, it'll print whatever's in the string you put between it. So it's essentially a print function, which you can enter into it. And it, when it runs, you'll be able to type your input in this space on the right. After pressing enter, it'll grab what you typed as a string for, the, for your code to use. So um, actually, I think it might be better. Yeah, let's go over this slide too. So you can set a variable equal. So the way to save the data that your user inputted is to set a variable equal to the input. So this saves whatever the user entered as a string variable. Then you can do whatever you want with the input. So if you want to perform math on it, you have to use um, a function called integer to force whatever input to become an int to convert it from a string to an integer, yeah. Okay, so uh, how about we sp spend a minute, how about you guys try and recreate this so you get a better um, grasp of inputs? So we spend maybe two minutes. Yeah, just react when you're, yes when you're done. Yeah. If you have any questions, just put them in chat. I'm going to open up the chat so I can actually see it. Because we'll be applying these later on some practice problems that you can try out. I wonder if I could also see the reactions. Hmm. Okay, so it doesn't seem like we have, uh, wait, are the reactions mostly yes, or? Uh, Ethan? Only one person, oh, two people have reacted so far. Okay, because we're running a little bit out of time, so I'm gonna speed this up a little, because we will have some problems at the end that use input. So we can always come back to this slide if you guys need a refresher. All right, so I'm gonna jump into our next concept, which is basic math. So for the most part, for computers to do cool things, they need math. So programming languages are able to do basic math. So over here, we have an image which just describes the general um, math operations you can perform in Python. So obviously plus represents, well, addition, the asterisk represents multiplication, the slash, not black slash, just slash represents division, and the minus represents subtraction. So you guys can try adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying different um, numbers in one print statement. And you can also combine these. So you could do one plus one times two. I don't know if we're going a little too fast because we are running out a bit of time. Ooh. So are we good with the slide, guys? Yep. Looks All right. Good. So again, like I said, we could combine operations. So that basically essentially means that Python also follows bed mass. So you can use the order of operations in your print statements. Uh, and you can use an extra pair of brackets to represent, well, brackets. And you can also use double asterisks to represent power or exponents. So this would be two to the exponent of five. Uh, are we good to move on? Somebody asked about modulus. Oh yes, that is in fact the next slide. All right, um, we can move so on. you can also get the remainder of a division statement with modulo. So modulo is represented with a percentage sign. So essentially 13 um, remainder five would be three because we know if we divide 13 by five, the remainder will be three. Um, and another th cool thing is um, you can, because um, notice how the regular division statement, it has a point zero. This is because the regular division is floating point division. So it returns a flow, which is essentially a decimal number. So if you wanted to round down 
um, and just be in regular whole integer number, you can use two slashes to represent um, floor division. Nobody has any questions, so. All right, then we'll move on. And finally, you can use math to add strings. So you can add strings to strings. So hello world, we can add it together. You can also multiply strings with integers, not other strings with integers. So I'll, I'll put hello, 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 hello. And uh, finally, you can't um, add strings with integers. You can only add strings with other strings. So this will be useful in some future problems, but it's just something to keep your mind open to. Uh, if we don't have any questions, we'll move on to the next slide. All right, so the most important part of coding is not in fact coding, but comments are texts in code that are ignored by whatever runs the program, which means that they can only be read by people looking at the code. This is usually used to uh, explain what a specific part of the code is and to make it more readable. So as you can see in the example, A plus B adds two numbers together. All right, to create comments in Python, you, you uh, use a pound or a hashtag symbol. Uh, in Python, you can make, also make a comment with multiple lines by putting text between three quotation marks. This creates a multi-line string, which isn't technically a comment, but since it's not part of a variable, it won't run as a code. So um, again, commenting is something that's not necessary, but it is highly recommended because it helps people understand your code. So we always want you to comment your code no matter how little it is. So let's move on to our first practice problem. I don't know if we'll be able to get into our second one, but essentially for our first practice problem, we're gonna create a program to greet the user. So first you wanna use a variable to collect the input for a user's name. So between input um, or between the brackets, you can create a custom prompt in between the brackets to ask a user for a name. Then you wanna use a print statement to write a custom greeting to the um, name inputted by the user. So for that you could use um, addition of strings. And don't forget to add comments. So maybe we'll take can we get five minutes to do this? We'll be a little late. And if you guys want me to go back to a specific slide, just tell me in the chat. Sorry. Um, I think it's good if people react, yes, if they're done. So if, yeah, if you're done, react with yes. Um, does it seem like people are reacting mostly with yes? We can go over the example solution now, since we're running out of time. Okay, yeah, we're running out of time, unfortunately, today. Because we had a little bit of a late start. So here's an example solution to the first problem. So um, we have the variable, we have the input, and the prompt. And then we have print, a uh, custom message, and we add the name by adding the strings. 
So if you guys want to take a time to maybe make note of it or I don't know, copy it down to see how it works, you could do that. Again, these lessons will be uploaded after we yeah. are all done onto our Google Classroom. So since we didn't have time to go over practice problem two, if you want to challenge yourself further, you can just access the PowerPoint on the classroom and then um, we're, we also provide an example solution at the end. Yep. Um, I don't know if I want to spoil it right now, but this is practice problem two if you're interested. And um, yeah, this will be on the classroom. So definitely if you want to do homework, you can do homework. If you don't, then leave it. And I'm going to pass by that solution slide. You guys have learned basic Python. So we have some extra resources here. Again, when we upload the slides, you guys can access these. Um, these are just really nice resources um, to review what we've um, gone over on the slides and for extra practice. And we also have a homework challenge on top of the second practice problem. You can try making a basic calculator that takes two numbers and an operation. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to message us in the hashtag Python help Discord channel. You can also talk to us on um, Instagram at PetCS Club, and we'll be uploading the lesson on YouTube. So you can always rewatch it if you've missed a certain part of the lesson.